Can Indiana start 7-0? Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rush Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our video. Last weekend in college football was a massive week for the college football playoff picture. A lot of big games and a lot of big results that have impacted the CFP race. And this week, there aren't as many big games, but there's still a few that are definitely going to impact the college football playoff race. So I'm going to preview and predict every single big game of week eight during the college football season and see which teams I think will win and lose. Now on Thursday night, we got a decent ACC matchup between Boston College at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech favored by about a touchdown. It is tough to win at Lane Stadium at night. I know Virginia Tech has been struggling and Boston College has resurged a little bit under Bill O'Brien, but they have been struggling the last couple weeks and suffered a bad loss or two on their resume. I do think Virginia Tech will squeak out a 28-21 to 21 win over Boston College. Then we got a dumpster fire game here. I know Duke's having a decent season, but for Florida State, it is an absolute mess of a season. And they're going on the road to face Duke as a three-point underdog, which is absolutely embarrassing. I think that Florida State, this is their last chance to have any shot of turning around their season. I'm just not seeing it. I don't think that Florida State is really going to have any effort in them at this point in the season. The players are just kind of tapped out, even though they still can make a bowl game. They'd have to do a lot to get to that point. I think that Duke will end up knocking off Florida State 24-17. to Then we got Oregon at Purdue and another dumpster fire game. It should be unless Purdue somehow gives Oregon a game because, hey, Purdue made a QB change and they gave Illinois a game. They took Illinois all the way to overtime down to the wire and it looked like Purdue was going to get blown out in that game just like they did against Wisconsin and Notre Dame earlier in the season. But, hey, that QB switch gave them a shot. And Oregon's coming off that big win over Ohio State and we have seen so many times in the past when a team gets a big win that they go into next week unfocused and they could struggle. Look at Bama losing at Vanderbilt after beating Georgia. I don't think Oregon's going to do that. I do think they will beat Purdue 31-17, but I don't think they're going to blow them out. There's going to be some struggles in this game for Oregon coming off that big win, but I do still think they will win. Then you got Oklahoma State traveling to BYU. BYU is undefeated. They're playing great football, but is this the game where they finally slip up? BYU's favored by 10, and we know with Mike Gundy, when their backs are pushed against the the wall. Oklahoma State always ends up finding a way to get a big win out of nowhere. A lot of times when they're favored, they lose, and when they're an underdog, they win. They're kind of like UCF in that regard. But I don't know. Oklahoma State's looked so bad so far this season that I will go with BYU to win 28-27. But I'm only going with a one-point win because I think Oklahoma State is going to give them a heck of a game. Then moving on to Saturday, we got Miami at Louisville in the second best game of the noon window. Miami is a favorite in this game, but they have barely won a couple of games in the ACC this season against Cal and Virginia Tech. And Louisville's probably better than both those teams. And this game is on the road. The problem for Louisville, though, is that the Cardinals have been struggling to close out games. They lost to SMU. They lost to Notre Dame. Had a shot in both games, but just couldn't get it done. They struggled with Virginia last week. So, honestly, I think Louisville has some things they need to figure out. And I think they'll give Miami a game. But, I don't know. The Hurricanes just keep finding ways to win for the first time in a very long time. I think Miami will beat Louisville 28 to 27. Then you got the best game of the new window, Nebraska at Indiana. This is a huge game that even has college football playoff implications. Nebraska's one loss. If they can win out, they can still make the playoffs. But they have Ohio State coming up next week, so could be a little bit of a look ahead. Indiana playing really good football for the first time since the 2019 and 2020 seasons, and they're 6-0 for the first time since 1967. Kurt Signetti has Indiana in unprecedented waters right now. They're a seven-point favorite. I think that Indiana is going to have some difficulty with Nebraska because Nebraska is the best team that they have faced, but this is the best team that Nebraska has faced, in my opinion, unless you believe that the Illinois game is the best team that they have faced. But I think Indiana is better than Illinois. The Comb crowd's going to help out IU. I'm going to go with the Hoosiers win by 28 to 24 over Nebraska. But this game's going to go back and forth and should be the best game of the new window. Then you got Auburn at Missouri. I know Missouri's ranked and Auburn does usually play better against top 25 opponents, but Auburn is a dumpster fire right now and they look kind of anemic overall. Missouri, even though they did struggle mightily in that loss to Texas A&M, Missouri's at home. I think they knock off Auburn 31 to 20. 
Then we have Wisconsin at Northwestern. Both these teams are playing better lately, though. Wisconsin is favored by seven. Northwestern just blew out Maryland. I think Wisconsin will win 31-24, to but this should be a little interesting game in the Big Ten. Then moving on, later on to the 3.30 window, you have Alabama at Tennessee. Huge game here with big playoff implications. The loser of this game is not eliminated from the playoffs, but they're not going to be in good shape. They're probably going to have to win out if they want to make the playoffs, especially Tennessee, but probably even Alabama as well. It would be hard for either of these teams with three losses to get in, especially Bama too having that loss to Vandy. But Tennessee, they're at home. It's Neyland, and Alabama, the last time they went to Neyland, they did not win, and this is the first true road environment for Kalen DeBoer and the SEC as the Alabama head coach. This is going to be a massive game. I think Alabama is going to be furious still with the way that they've been playing the last couple weeks, but I don't trust Bama at all. Even though Tennessee struggled as well against Arkansas losing to them and Florida, I'm actually going to go with Tennessee to knock off Alabama 28-24. to I think that Tennessee gets the win. Alabama's been playing worse, and I think Tennessee gets it done. Then you've got Notre Dame traveling to Georgia Tech. That's a sneaky little game right there. I think Georgia Tech is a decent team this year, but they have not really broken through yet in the Brent Key era. I think that they've gotten better, but still a team that just really can't win the big, big game. And Notre Dame still on that quest to try to get back into the college football playoff conversation. Shouldn't have lost Northern Illinois, and they are playing very well right now. They do have a few injuries on their team, but I'm going to go with Notre Dame and knock off Georgia Tech 31 to 20. Then you got Michigan and Illinois in the second best game of the 330 Tom slot. Michigan is a favorite against Illinois about three and a half, but Illinois has been good this year. Beating Nebraska was their big headline win, but still I do believe that Illinois kind of showcased against Penn State that they can hang with a better team, but they really can't play consistently great against a solid team. But is Michigan a great team? I don't think so. I think Michigan's offense is a major problem. They have struggled mightily on that side of the ball, and their only big win is against USC, and that win's looking worse and worse. Since it's on the road, I'm actually going to go with Illinois to upset Michigan 31-24. If Michigan's offense was better, I would pick them to win but I do think Illinois gets the dub. Then you got an interesting game in the Big Ten between USC and Maryland. Maryland's playing like trash the last couple of weeks, whereas USC has not been much better. Even though the teams they have lost to, besides Minnesota, haven't been awful teams. That Minnesota game was pretty bad. Their other two losses aren't the worst. Maryland, though, got obliterated by Northwestern, got beat by Indiana. It is on the road, but I don't think USC's going to throw in the towel just yet. If they lose this game, though, Lincoln Riley's in massive trouble because he's 5-8 and eight in his last 13 games as their head coach. This might be the game that sets it over the edge for him if he can't get it done. I'll go with USC to win 28-24, but I think it's going to be a close game, and if they do lose, Lincoln Riley's in big trouble. Then you got Colorado at Arizona. Good game in the Big 12. Arizona's been playing a little bit better. They're favored by three. Colorado, I picked them against K-State, and they let me down. I thought they were going to be able to get that win, just couldn't get it done. Colorado has some injuries right now. They're banged up as a team. I think that the health of their team is going to be a major factor in this game on whether they win or lose. I'm going to go with Arizona to knock off Colorado 31-28. I think Arizona's healthier. They're on their own field, and Colorado might still be a little bit upset. They fell short in that big game against K-State. Give me the Arizona Wildcats. Then to move on, to Saturday night. You got LSU at Arkansas. Good game right here. Arkansas, they did beat Tennessee on their own field. They're playing better football right now. And LSU, they're ranked in the top 10. Kind of riding high a little bit, getting some big wins. I think LSU is going to choke up here. I honestly do. I think LSU is the better team, obviously, but they're not good enough to be able to withstand an average performance on the road. And Arkansas has got a great home environment. It's going to be at night. Give me the Hogs to get another signature win and probably get into the top 25 in the process by beating LSU 31 to 27. Then you got Georgia at Texas. This is the game of the week and definitely has playoff implications. You've got the Texas Longhorns ranked number one. They've got Quinn Ewers back. And then you look at Georgia ranked at number five. And Carson Beck, yeah, he's got some stuff distracting him off the field, you could say. But still, on the field, he threw for 485 yards last week. That's a good performance for him. But Georgia's defense gave up 31 to Mississippi State. Something's going on with Georgia. When you look at the fact that Georgia lost to Bama, Bama lost to Vandy, barely beat South Carolina, I don't do that transit of property stuff, but Georgia just isn't looking all that great of a team right now. They barely beat Kentucky, who also lost to Vanderbilt. It's a trend. Georgia is not looking that good right now. I think they're still a great team overall, but they're not playing like it. Give me Texas, especially on their own field, to knock off Georgia 34-24. to Then you've got Kansas State traveling to West Virginia. 
this could be for Neil Brown's job. If Kansas State didn't win at Colorado, I would have gone with West Virginia to win this game. And if West Virginia had knocked off Iowa State, who I did pick them to win last week. They didn't get it done, though. West Virginia's not getting wins they need to help them make a bowl game or even be competitive in the Big 12. And Neil Brown, like I said, is in a lot of trouble. Every time, though, that Neil Brown looks like he's done, he ends up getting a big win, though, which kind of worries me. Is this the game that they're finally going to get a big win this year? But he hasn't done it so far in three tries. Give me Kansas State and Avery Johnson to go and take out Country Roads 31-24 to and for Neil Brown's hot seat to get even hotter. Then you got Iowa at Michigan State. Decent game in the Big Ten. Not for an NBC game, though. Definitely a weak NBC game, but still not a bad game overall. Michigan State's playing better football, but Iowa, they always find ways to end up making their record look good, going 8-4, and 9-3. and three. I think that they will win this game. 31-20. to 20. Their defense played a little bit better last week against Washington. Their offense still actually has been decent, so give me Iowa to get the win. Then you got Kentucky at Florida. I just love how stupid this game is right here, because Florida Billy Napier, he had Tennessee last week. If he had to beat Tennessee, then he could have been able to save his job permanently, right? Not the case, though, because their schedule still daunting, but that would have been huge for him to get a big win. Couldn't get it done, but Florida's still been competitive. They're actually favored in this game. Even though Kentucky held Georgia to one point, and then they lost to Vanderbilt last week, there's just so many funny storylines in this game. Both these teams have been very competitive against each other the past few times they have played in the SEC East. I think Kentucky's the better team, but I do do believe that Florida is playing better right now. So give me Florida, even though they lost to Tennessee. I think the Gators are going to win at Gainesville 31 to 27. This is going to be an interesting game. And then to close out the week eight slate, you got TCU at Utah. It sucks to see Cam Rising go down. That is so tough to see. I hate it for Utah because he was coming back off the injury. He said he was ready to play, and then you could just tell from the jump he was not healthy. Then he got even more injured. Will we see Cam Rising ever again? I have no idea. TCU, though, not a great team. I think that the Horned Frogs, with a healthy quarterback in Josh Hoover, will be able to have a shot to beat Utah. But it's still at Rice-Eccles. It's still at night. And now you're going to have Isaac Wilson back, who arguably could probably give Utah a better chance to win than Cam Rising at this point. Even if Cam Rising was trying to go out there and play again, it's just not going to happen. I think Isaac Wilson will be able to lead Utah to a 21-20 victory over TCU. I still trust Kyle Whittingham in that home field and that night atmosphere. I think Utah will win, but if they had a healthy Cam Rising, this wouldn't even be a debate. But those are my picks for every single major Week 8 game during the college football season. Let me know what you guys think about this slate. I feel like it's a solid slate of college football. You don't have a lot of massive matchups, but you've got the Tennessee Alabamas. you got the Georgia Texas, and then you got a game like Nebraska-Indiana. And No one was circling at the beginning of the season, but now it's a big game now. going to be very interesting to see what happens. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about every single major Week 8 game and which teams you think are going to end up winning these big matchups and whether you agree or disagree with my picks for all of these games. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description, and I'll see you next time.